Hey guys, and welcome back to NJ Education. Uh, in today's video, we're talking about how to prepare for PAD, which stands for Physics Aptitude Test, uh, which is used for admissions at Oxford University. And we have a very special guest, Niels, uh, with us today. Niels, great to have you back. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so we're going to be discussing all things to do with the uh, PAT test, which is used for um, entering lots of different subjects for Oxford, uh, material science, engineering, physics. That's right. Um, great. So without further ado, let's go. Niels, so first of all, um, what is PAT? So the PAT is the physics aptitude test. And this is what every candidate who is applying for um, physics, engineering and material science needs to sit. Um, every candidate does this, whether they've been accepted for an interview or not. So it's before this stage. Okay. You sit this just so you, uh, you apply for a UCAS deadline around 15th of October. Um, and then towards the end of October um, will be when you have you sit the PAT test. Everyone sits at the same time. Um, and it's an admissions test set by the tutors um, from Oxford that everyone sits. Niels, and um, how long does PAT take and what are the, what are the sections of the, uh, the PAT? So the PAT is a two hour examination and the style of the PAT has changed a lot over the years. Essentially, there are two different topics it covers. It covers maths and it covers physics. Now in the new PAT exam or the latest one, these are all together in a single section. In previous um, uh, styles of the PAT test, there have been a math section and a physics section, and then a joint section, or there've been multiple choice and there've been longer questions. In the new PAT test, it's all in one section. So the questions may be a maths question or a physics question, but they are sort of randomly allocated. Okay, and um, with, you know, with the with the PAD, normally, um, if you're in the UK and you're applying from, you know, from a school here, um, it, it, do you sort of, do you get enrolled automatically or do you need to register for the test? Yeah, so if you've applied, then your school will enroll you in the PAD test and they will usually have a, um, they'll be able to do the test in the school. And if not, there'll be a sort of other, maybe a bigger school where they are sitting the PAD test. So you might have to go to that school to sit it. Yeah, and uh, guys, just, just a bit of warning, if you're applying internationally, chances are your school will have no idea what PAT is and, and um, would not be enrolling you. And what you need to do is you need to go on the Oxford website um, on, the, on the PAT, uh, PAT section, and that has uh, country specific information. Normally you register for PAT and you sit it uh, at your local British council. Um, um, so you, need to, you may need to reach out to them independently before the deadline, and um, you know, make inquiries and, and, and register for the test. And it's fairly simple. You just need a copy of your passport uh, and maybe a registration fee. Um, that fee may be waived depending on where you are. So just just start this early. D don't leave this until uh, until October, November. You know, start looking into this in August, September. Find out who you need to contact just to be on the safe side. Anyways, so uh, you registered for PAD. Um, and does PAD happen? Um, you know, how does it happen? Do you go somewhere or do you do it remotely, um, you know, online? Um, so when I did my PAT test, it was uh, in person. So you have a booklet like just an exam and everything is in that and then that gets sent off. Um, so you'll do it online in your booklet. Okay, okay, cool. So in, in person, in, on, in the booklet. <laughs> in person, yeah. And, and in, in fact, even this year, most of our students still were able to do the PAT um, in person uh, in the... Um, yeah, either in the UK or wherever they were. So, um, because it's not a it's not a super popular exam, you know, even with coronavirus, you know, there should be a way to to kind of do it safely. Um, okay, and how would you um, how would you prepare for that? Uh, because you hear horror stories and and you know people leaving the exam crying because they couldn't finish it. Um, I mean, how do you how do you give yourself the advantage in the test? Yeah, so what I will just say as an introduction to PAT is this isn't an A-level exam. It's not an A-level physics or an A-level maths. You're probably used to, if you're applying to Oxford, to getting really high grades in all of your tests. The PAT test is slightly different. Mm -hmm. You won't be going in expecting to get high 90%. Uh, very, very few people get really high marks. It is a hard exam. It's an Oxford entrance exam. So going in and acing every question isn't really on the cards. So 
just before you go in, know that you're not going to get everything and go in with that attitude of doing the best that you can. Yeah. So that's the first sort of piece of advice for it. The general content that's in the um, PAT test, um, generally it will be your first year physics and maths that you will have covered. However, the difference is it might not be the style of question that you're used to. Mm -hmm. Maybe applying your formula or your knowledge in a slightly different way to what you're used to. So it's showing that aptitude, taking your existing knowledge and how can you apply that to questions that don't seem familiar. A lot of the battle with PAT test is what is this question actually asking me? Mm -hmm. So really reading through the question and breaking it down is a really great way to start each question. What is this question actually asking me? Because sometimes they can be confusing. And it's also not necessarily like A-levels where if they give you a piece of information, you have to use it. PAT test doesn't have to follow those rules. They can give you pieces of information that actually you're not needed in the solution. So they can throw sort of curveballs like that. And it's showing, do you know what information that you need to have that's relevant to this piece, this question? Um, so that's the sort of content wise of it. So preparing for it, the best way to do this is to be really solid on your um, first year physics and maths. Um, have practiced, you know, in your maths, your differentiation, your curve drawing. Um, a lot of the time there are geometry questions in the PAT test. Uh, so dealing with shapes and triangles and squares and dealing with things like that, visualization uh, on the maths side. So being really solid on those. And then on your physics side, um, trying to be as solid as you can on your formula that you know, the really basic one to not get confused by those. Um, and just having read over the notes that you've got and going in with a confident attitude. They may bring in some stuff which you may not have covered. And in that case, if you haven't covered it, you haven't covered it. So there's no point trying to pretend that you have covered it. Um, but it's a going in and going, okay, I don't know this, but let's give it a go. Let's use my initiative and write something down rather than leaving it blank. Definitely. And I would say, because there are students coming from different countries, different schools in the UK, um, some have, you know, some schools kind of are ahead of the curriculum, others are slightly behind, others have different curricula, all, curricula, is that the, the Latin word? Yeah, curricula all, um, uh, all together. So um, that's why Purposefully Pad has lots of topics, right? And you're not meant to, you know, there are some topics that kind of they would expect everybody to know, some fairly simple stuff. But then on the harder topics, the test is designed deliberately for you to kind of leave out some of the stuff and tackle the other. And, 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 and that's totally normal. So if you're getting 70% of the test, that's considered the high score. And normally, ordinarily, if you have 70 or above, you will get invited to an interview. Now to you, if you're applying to Oxford, um, you know, for, for, for PAD, you will be used, as you've said, 90, 95% um, in your, in your A-level exams or your school exams, um, just lower your expectations. Obviously, you know, try very hard, but even, even a 70, even, you know, 65% is still a decent, um, you know, a decent, uh, decent showing. And if you have 75 plus, then, you know, you're really, you know, you've done something really well. Mm. Yeah. And just on the point you said that it's designed for different people. So one question that you might find really impossible, someone might have got that question, but then another question they find impossible, you breeze through and find it really easily. So you don't know what others have found tricky in it. And you don't know which ones are supposed to be the really hard ones because really hard for one person might not be the same for another person. Yeah. And, and also I wouldn't get disheartened after the test, obviously you leave the, you know, you leave the room and in the normal year, everybody would like, Oh, what did you get on this question? What did you say for this? Um, some people have this just quite bad quality where they say, Oh yeah, I've aced everything. I, you know, I'm super confident. I, I like, and you know, and you're sort of sitting there kind of scared, you know, dreading it. And I remember after my finals, at Oxford, we leave the examinations hall, and uh, you know there was a guy in my year who was like, "Yeah, nailed it. Yeah, we'll be you know ninety percent plus." Anyway, he he didn't make it through finals. You know he um you know he left university after that, and 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 it's it's kind of just a showing that some people are just very good at putting on a facade, and ultimately your competition is yourself. So don't worry about somebody answering that question that you didn't get because that's totally normal, and uh, just focus on your performance. Yeah. And it's important to note that it's they're not super strict on going, right, OK, an absolute third of people got this. So we're only going to invite that third and you're completely cut off. 
if you're sort of around the kind of boundary mark, they, they've got lenience. It's, it's a part of their decision making. It's not a complete cull of people. They go, OK, you maybe scored a little bit lower than what we would have want on the pat, but your A-levels were great and your personal statement's great. So they kind of balance each other out. They consider you as a whole candidate, not just as a number and a percentage. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also your reference. So, for example, if in your reference you had some special circumstances that prevented you from having an interrupted you know, a couple of years of studying before before sitting the path through family circumstances or bereavement or, you know, whatever. Maybe you 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 were undertaking some caring duties. Um, and by the way, NJ, we run a pro bono scheme, uh, an access scheme, uh, where we help um, students from uh, from the UK who are eligible for free school meals uh, free of charge. Uh, we can't help everybody, but last year we helped about a dozen students. So if um, if you're eligible for free school meals, you're thinking about applying for you know, Oxford or Cambridge or you know you'll be doing path. Definitely get in touch. Um, we we have uh, resources set aside uh, to to help uh, people in your situation. So uh, so do get in touch um, uh, to us by email. But just you know, just coming back to that, if your teacher um, you mentioned something about your background, saying look, this applicant she had to take care of her of her mother who's who's been undergoing hospital treatment, uh, you know, on top of school and maybe looking after her younger siblings. Um, so actually, for someone like this a score of only 60% is much more impressive than somebody who's had a totally trouble, you know, troubleless uh, kind of upbringing and getting 80%, right? So th they view all of these data points in combination um, and it's it's never just one person making a decision, right? It's, it's, it's collegiate, um, especially for engineering subjects they'd like to, uh, you know, for physics, engineering, material science, they'd like to get around the table um, they share information. And there is always a second pair of eyes looking at it. So it's not like one person is deciding the destiny, you know, the fate of your application. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Okay, Niels. And um, just in terms of preparation for the test, um, you know, you've covered the you know, the maths and physics aspects. Uh, are there any past papers available online? Can you, you know, can you get a hold of resources? Yeah, you can get a hold of um, all past papers to do. Um, they don't, Oxford don't give out model solutions um, to these exams. There are a few sample examples on their website that you can get. If you go on to, um, if you look up Pat Oxford, uh, you'll find all the past papers and some specimen papers with solutions, um, but you're unlikely to find, they don't produce um, full solutions to them. And I think part of the reason they don't do this is because it isn't just a single mark scheme. People can approach questions in a different way and still be correct to someone who's approached it in a different way. Um, and I think they want you from going through these practice papers to try and develop yourself um, and try and develop your technique of going through them rather than just going, okay, that's the mark scheme, copy the mark scheme, learn the mark scheme. It's not as much about that. Yeah. Um, but if you do um, are struggling, chat to people, ask maybe your physics teacher or your maths teacher or um, to help on some questions. Or if you've got maybe a few people that are studying the pact, maybe go over it together um, or find loads. Obviously, there's loads of people a year applying for it. So find it online. Um, see how um, a community online may, might be able to help. Yeah. And, you know, places like, um, you know, the student room Reddit. Uh, you know, it's not just to to kind of you know manipulate the stock market. You you know, you also have chat rooms where people um, you know go through this together. And end of the day, you have to remember that yes, they're your competitors, but actually, Oxford will always invite an interview uh, people who who deserve to be invited for an interview in, in in their eyes. And and if one year they have to they have more candidates who've done really well on the pad, they'll invite more people, right? As long as the the references and the personal statement and the A levels are there. So it's not like, you know, it's, it's not a zero sum game uh, and, and, and it's not a certain quota. So if, I remember a couple of years below me, it might even be your year in material science. Um, normally material science is about 75% uh, boys, 25% girls, but there was one year when it was 50-50 or it was like 55 girls, 45 boys. And, and, and because that year just more qualified girls applied, right? Um, and were selected. So it's not, it's not like a, a quota or a number that they're looking to hit. Mm. Yeah, and that's important to note for any subject you're applying for, is that there's no certain quotas that they fill. It's, are you a, um, an a, a eligible applicant? Do you have what we're looking for? And as you say, if there are a thousand of them, or if there are 500 of them, that's the amount that they will take for their interview. Yeah. And in fact, this year, obviously a different subject, but we had a, uh, one of our students who applied for Natsky at Cambridge, 
and um, uh, he really impressed, uh, you, you know, really impressed um, admissions officers was offered a, you know, was offered in the third place, right, because they, they kind of accommodated him in 2021, they've invited him to join in 2022. Um, so if, you know, they will make it work if they want you there and if you impress the interviewers uh, through, um, through the application, they will make it work and you will get that place. Uh, Niels, just as we're wrapping up, what are your top three tips for somebody to ace the PAT? Okay, so top tips. First of all, time management. Make sure you're watching the clock. Don't spend an hour struggling through one question just to get yourself four marks. If you're, if you're not getting it in the time allocated, move on. Um, and make sure you do you know what um, minutes sort of per mark you've got. It might change. I think it's usually about 100 marks. Um, but just do a little calculation on the front of your test. Say, right, okay, and this year it's 80 marks. And I've, got an, I've got two hours. Just do the calculation and have that in your head as you're going through. Don't spend too much time on a really difficult question because um, there might be easier ones to come. Just because it's going further back in the test doesn't mean necessarily they're getting harder. Um, that's also a sort of a bonus tip there is that usually you're used to the easy ones being at the beginning and hard ones at the end. Not necessarily going to be true in the pack. Might be true. Um, but if you can't do the first question, don't panic. Move on to the second one, start afresh. Second piece of advice is to not leave anything blank. Write something down. Even if it's a question, say, about ele electricity, and you not, I'm not really sure, just writing a relevant formula down. It might be a right formula, it might not, but just writing things down. Um, say you can't remember the formula for something, and this is something I used in my finals exam. I couldn't remember a really simple formula and so I just made one up and I wrote a note to the examiner saying, really sorry, this isn't the right formula and I know it's not, but in order to complete this question, I need a formula, so I'm gonna use this. I showed my initiative, I worked through and then got a solution, probably the wrong one because it was the wrong formula, yeah. but I showed that initiative. I didn't leave the question blank. So always try and write something down that you've got in there. Um, and finally, don't panic. It can be that you go through the first two questions. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. Don't panic. You'll get to one that you can do. You'll be able to work through some bits. Yes, you may not have finished a question, but you might have got half the marks. You might have got to a solution, but you're not quite sure. You will have got some marks. Don't panic. Really try as much as you can to stay calm. Um, as you go in, you don't know. It might be a year where it's just a really, really hard test. Or it might be a year where it's a really easy test and vice versa. Just do the best that you can do. Try and stay positive with each individual question that you've got and manage your time well. Um, and try not to panic if you seems like you haven't got any of the answers because you've probably done better than you think you have. Definitely. Niels, this has been super helpful. Thank you so much for your time. And um, guys, if you, if you found this useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we post content on university admissions uh, in the UK and America regularly. If you have specific questions to myself and Niels, pop them in the questions uh, in the comment section below. We'll try to answer as many as we can. And uh, all the best. Yeah, thanks for watching um, and good luck on acing your pat test. Bye-bye. Cheers, Niels.